Hello, my name is Audrey Fallhaber, and the title of my presentation is The Sami Woman. Due to the underdocumentation of Sami women, it's important to understand both their traditional and modern lives in order to gain a complete understanding of the Sami. First, we're going to examine some research studies that are about the traditional lives, experiences, and views of Sami women. Next, we will discuss Sami women's daily roles that give us a look at both the modern and traditional responsibilities of the women. Finally, we will end with a more modern look at the Sami. Specifically, we will talk about both the women's impacts and difficulties in politics and reindeer herding. Keep in mind, these findings may not apply to all Sami women in all areas. This is because, as we know, the Sami culture is very diverse and is constantly changing. These next three studies are authentic primary sources from Sami women themselves. The main goal of this study was to investigate how indigenous Sami women narrate their own lives and experiences of being old, specifically 85 and older, and Sami. Nine Sami women were interviewed. For their findings, the woman talked a lot about the importance of owning reindeer. Owning reindeer is seen to bring wealth and positive value. Also, most women that were interviewed felt highly valued in the Sami society. For gender equality, they mostly talked about themselves as being on equal footing with their husbands. Most women actually thought it was easier to be a Sami woman than a Sami man because men were predominantly in charge of the reindeer herding. However, the woman also said that after a long day of work in the field, they were always the ones who had to prepare the meals while the men could rest. The interviewed woman also talked about how they're worried that with all the modernization going on, that the Sami culture is slowly disintegrating, this including reindeer herding as well. This next study focused on middle-aged and older women and looked at the contributions to well-being and lack of well-being. For well-being, the findings were that the Sami felt that they were blessed with their health and claimed that sickness was never really an issue. It was only an issue in boarding schools when the children lived close to other kids. In addition, well-being from the Sami was associated with living close to memories of reindeer, the mountains, the language, and traditional Sami culture. Specifically, owning reindeer contributed to feelings of strength and pride. Also, the idea of having a life of one's own relates to Sami self-determination, which is very important for their well-being. Now, for lack of well-being, the results show that, that many women claimed that the relocation to the north made them feel like strangers and outsiders. They were also the victim of discrimination from others from the majority culture for being seen as too exotic and poor. Boarding schools were another venue in which they experienced discrimination from their peers and even their teachers. This final study examined the meaning of Sami self-determination from the perspective of Sami women. So the question asked was, how do Sami women understand this concept of self-determination? And how do they evaluate the current efforts to implement self-determination by Sami political institutions? So, most of the Sami women interviewed defined self-determination about the same. They defined it as an ability, freedom, or right to make decisions over one's own affairs both at the individual and collective levels. Three women discussed the lack of women's self-determination traditionally in Sami society. One woman who grew up in a reindeer herding family noted how she was excluded from reindeer herding activities once she got an education. Several other women were highly critical of the male-centric institutions, political processes, and agendas, which often shun women's participation and ignore their views. Finally, many interviewed women wanted more effective ways to participate in decision-making with regard to issues such as managing Sotme land and traditional livelihoods. So we now have a sense of what the older generations view life as a Sami woman to be like. Next, let's talk about women's traditional roles and how they may differ nowadays. For most Sami occupational groups, such as nomadic reindeer herding, fishing, and sedentary farming, women contribute a significant amount. Traditionally, both sexes and virtually all ages share the chores in reindeer herding. However, today women and children don't participate in these activities as much as they used to, especially sedentary Sami, which are Sami that do not travel much for their livelihood. This is due to the 10-month school year, government-subsidized housing, and the daily demands of modern housing. For nomads, mobility is very important for their lifestyle. 
Women claim that if small children interfere with the herding, there are usually people in their sitta available to help out with the kids. Just note that there are fewer and fewer nomadic Sami today, however, it is still apparent. Traditionally, children don't get assigned certain chores based on solely their gender. Instead, they try all of them and see what they're good at. However, traditionally, women participate in extraction activities such as berry picking, freshwater fishing, and small game hunting. The only male exclusive occupation was considered to be ocean fishing. For daily tasks in a traditional Sami household, women would do almost all of the shopping, control the cash, and monitor markets for new manufactured products. Also, it used to be normal for women, men and women to own separate properties with each gender managing their own loans. However, today this is far less common. Traditionally, the nomad women were in charge of orchestrating gathering and trading activities with other siddhas. This allows for social interaction with others and also to navigate venues for trade. In addition, women typically would maintain a road vehicle used for long distance visiting and trading while men are in charge of the snowmobile. We're about to talk more about the modern issues with women and reindeer herding later, which will relate to this issue with the snowmobile. So next, we're going to talk about a more modern view of Sami women. Specifically, we're going to focus on women's political position and the legislation and practical issues with reindeer herding. So in the struggle to gain Sami rights in the late 19th and 20th century, women have and continue to play a significant role. Elsa Laula Renberg was the chair of the Sami women's first organization. She also actively promoted Sami land rights and advocated the education of women. Sami women also played a central role in the Alpha River conflict in the late 17, 1970s and also the 1980s, although men have received more attention. Women tried meeting with the prime minister, but she didn't see them worthy of her time and forcibly removed the women from her office. In 2005, the 14 women involved were finally recognized for their actions in 2005 by the Norwegian Sami Association. Today, the percentage of women in the Sami parliament of Norway is 46%, so women are certainly making their mark and getting more involved in Sami politics. However, even though there has been an increased women participation, discrimination unfortunately continues to exist. Even though only some of the Sami population work in the reindeer industry, the Sami identity is still dominated by the stereotype of reindeer herders. Since 1945, government policies have erased women's rights of reindeer ownership. They are instead registered under their husband's name since 1978. This makes it extremely difficult for women to continue their traditional reindeer herding livelihood if she happens to get divorced or widowed. Because women's roles in reindeer herding are not recognized or considered important in legislation, many women have left reindeer herding as a result. At the beginning of the 21st century, a group of Swedish Sami women drew attention to the gender inequalities in the working conditions and also in the future potential of working as reindeer herders. This led to a gender equality project abbreviated AFIRM being carried out between 2001 and 2003. One gender-related issue that was identified concerned the use of snowmobiles, which was given as the reason why women could not be reindeer herders. Basically, it was because men typically have more strength than women and could operate the snowmobiles more easily. However, the woman argued that we should be questioning the design and the choice of the snowmobiles instead. Another obstacle that women faced was that, was that it was difficult to combine reindeer herding with family life, education, and employment. The women were frustrated because typically reindeer herding families were forced to live separated for long periods of time. This was so the reindeer could be taken care of. Usually, the men would be the ones to go while the wives would stay home with the children. With this, women were slowly losing their traditional reindeer herding livelihoods, so they wanted to create a change. They realized that the advanced skills were, re were required to develop an architecture that truly meets the semi-nomadic lifestyle of reindeer herders. So, they worked with internet architects and many other specialists in order to achieve the following goals. 
One of the main goals is that users will be able to easier combine a modern lifestyle with their semi-nomadic lifestyle. Another goal is that users will be able to participate in social and political life, even at times of the year where they live in places without an internet connection. Finally, they plan to continue to create new technology for Sami women and men to conduct business more easily. Thanks to the Sami women voicing their concerns, there has been a continued push for technological advances, which will preserve and improve reindeer herding for a long time. So all in all, we can conclude that the Sami women sure have fascinating lives, whether we are looking at a traditional or modern view. No matter what obstacles fall in their way, they will always rise above with their ambition, drive, and pride of being a Sami woman.